born and raised just a couple of miles straight west. We have basically about 500 acres, give or take. We uh, farm with my son-in-law, Tim Larky, and then uh, Tim has got uh, 320 acres, and we've been doing it all organically since the uh, year 2000. And then we've been working a lot here lately with uh, NRCS, and we're expanding our operation to more cattle, cow-calf operation. And that's been working out really great for us. We're doing a lot of rotational grazing, the no-till that we're looking into. I don't know, it just really makes sense. We are always aware as far as trying to keep our costs down, and I think we can improve our soil and, and in turn make more money at what we're doing. It's been quite a unique year here for all of us farmers this year where we've had so much rain. We started chopping out there as far as uh, our corn silage. There were so many areas where it was wet, we were getting stuck. We finally got to the point there where we just said, we're just wrecking more than what we're you know, trying to accomplish. So we let it go and now here it's uh, you know the 8th of uh, November and we're chopping corn. <laughs> But uh, right now the ground is frozen up and then we're able to carry and get through all these wet spots. The ground is extremely rough, it's hard on equipment, but we're just taking our time and getting our corn chopped up. We're putting it in a pile and then we're packing that pile the best we can and then we'll try to put some wheat straw that we'll put over the top and kind of try to seal it that way so you know prevent it from uh, spoiling. These right here are the sweet clover bales. And we had a bunch of uh, oats and then we had it underseeded with sweet clover the year before and then we come out and cut that and then baled it up. Some of this here we'll probably grind it up with oats hay and stuff. It makes a real good hay. It's kind of coarse and stuff but we really grind it up and that works out good. And then of course here's some of our second cutting hay here. And then on the other end, we got uh, the oats hay. We'll probably grind some of that too. And then go out there to the pasture area and uh, putting it in these old tractor tires. The wagon there uh, drops it in to the tire where that kind of keeps it, uh, where the cattle are not stepping on it or whatnot. And it seemed like they can get access to it. Works out real good. Sometimes, you know, we used to have the troughs and stuff for the young stock, we got that, but we find that you get in an area, especially in the spring where it's wet and where you can move them around, otherwise it gets really wet and muddy and stuff, and with the tires, we can move them around to different parts of the pasture. And then what we're trying to achieve here is to get the cows out there in that pasture so you got the manure there instead of up around the feed lot and stuff where we gotta drag that manure out of there in the summer. The corn does so much better and with uh, you know a little better fertility or the manure because we don't use any fertilizer or chemicals or anything so it's a win-win for us. And then we started uh, with the black Angus and then we are going with red Angus now and uh, it's been working out real good. We sure like the red Angus where they're more uh, docile and uh, easier to work with. I don't know, just a good breed there that works good for us guys. Altogether, we got about about 60 head of cows and a couple of bulls and, and then the calves. We bought Kurt's farmhouse and farm back 12 years ago. We raised the calves up and sell them as feeders. The calves were getting corn silage and some haylage, and then we would give them a little bit of ground feed, uh, barley and oats. We normally feed our young stock and our cows once a day, usually starting late in the fall when they no longer can be on pasture. And we have to start feeding them. We'll do it till spring, till we get pasture. We've just kind of got started in with the no-till and cover crops. 
I suppose we've been doing it for about four years. And then just the soil and everything, there's such a difference there where we're getting into the more of the cover crops and building of soil and trying to get, build the organic matter. And what a difference, I know, especially with the cattle here now where we get all the manure and it's helped big time as far as getting our fertility up there. This year now we put in quite a bit of rye we planted this fall and we planted that right into some barley stubble and it got a good germination on that so we're looking forward to see how that turns out next year here. And we've done quite a bit of rye in the past and then worked that in and uh, planted soybeans and we had some pretty good luck with that with the no-till aspect of it. This land is so subject to erosion. A different time to work it up in the spring. And if you get a heavy rain, it washes so bad. And I just didn't want that at all anymore. So we've pretty much put this all into pasture and alfalfa. We'll come in here and take first cutting hay off of it. And we kind of pasture there on Tim's. Then we rotate them all through here and we rotated them. Some of these places were like three different times this year that they've been on there. And the big thing is where it's out a ways so we don't, it doesn't get the manure out here. We know as far as when we're spreading. So here now in the pasture and then they, we get the manure where we want it. So that has really helped us a lot. And then we got going with the paddock system and then moving these cattle. This year we uh, did with the mob grazing and Tim pretty much did all that where he got in all the rye grass and radishes and you name it. And it's just where you run a hot wire down uh, and split the field. Biggest thing is where they got access to water and some of that where they overlap each other. But what we found out there is where uh, you give that pasture a rest and we come back and run them through there two or three times after that and where it's just lush good grass and we got the fresh water there available for them. It's just so much more production out of that. That has really been a life-saving thing there for us where the cattle can stay out there in the pasture area. They're not up around the buildings where it brings the flies and stuff in. You get all the manure out there where you want it. We worked with the NRCS. They brought out a couple of different guys that specialized in grazing and then to set up and design the most effective way to put these water tanks in and then the line fence and the cross fences and stuff there to get them in and out of there. At one time when we were going into it, I thought, oh my gosh, that's going to be a hassle to move these cattle on that kind of a three, four times in a week. And we found out there now, once these cows get this figured out, just open the gate and get, the, get out of the way because they're going to move. They know the routine. They're smarter than we are. On our cover crop that we planted for rotational grazing, it was uh, an intensive grazing system. So we use red clover, sweet clover, some rye, where we set up with some poly wire and we set up paddocks and move the cows. We just keep moving a wire every day and made a water tank to move to each paddock every day. So as we moved them, we'd move the water tank. There was many paddocks. It was a total of 30 acres. Usually we try to leave about a third to a half uneaten and, and they trample some of it in the ground so that it covers the ground and protects it. It catches snow and then next year we wanted no-till of corn into where we had our cover crop for the cattle this year for silage. We've been working with uh, NRCS. Started, I suppose, about five, six years ago. You know, they're good guys to work for. And we worked with Ed there mainly. They've helped us out a lot. We were with our cows where they, we installed fences, four barbed wire fence around our perimeters. The big thing with these, when you got a good perimeter fence like that, where you can sleep a lot better at night where you don't have your cattle going out there or to the neighbors or whatever, and just good peace of mind. We worked in, a, in the past with the NRCS for a fencing and watering system on part of my land just north of the Grove, and it was through a, an equip program. NRCS was great to work, work with. 
The one I put in was a shallow buried water line. We hook it to our well and then it has two water tanks on mine and then there's two water tanks on Kurt's and they're all hooked together and we uh, hook that up in the spring. We have different paddocks hooked up to different tanks so then we can move the cattle around and they have water without going back to the farmyard for water. This here is one of our stock tanks. And we're set up with a hydrant, and then this uh, line was put in about eight feet deep. And then we got a hydrant here, one to the north, another one over here to the north and east. And they really work out beautiful. In the fall, we drain the tanks uh, when it gets to the point where uh, that shallow buried water line is going to start to freeze. In the winter time, our cows are moved closer to the farmyard where we have richy water for them to access water. I started out farming organically with in a system that was uh, set up for a lot of tillage. And we're trying to go more and more into a no-till system where we can reduce the tillage to try and cut down on expense of fuel and equipment costs. The reason why we uh, went to organic is we're very concerned with the environment. So many times where you think of organic, we have different opinions on it, but if it's done and done right, you know, it'll work out just fine. We've been 100% organic since about the year 2000. The weeds just went crazy the first couple of years. And then where we finally kind of work through that and realize what the do's and don'ts. Get the, the plant planted and till it the same day and stuff so they are both on the same playing field where the plant will germinate the same time as the weeds. You know, and what a difference where farming is fun again. The biggest thing is all these input costs and everything that we had when we were farming conventionally. My gosh, uh, you know, time you got done, what was left for you there? There was very little and you did all the work. Here we don't have any chemicals or fertilizer, you know, pesticides that are in our area. We're very unique, we're, you know, we're isolated. We don't have that exposure to, you know, any farm chemicals. Farming organically is, is somewhat challenging, or can be, but I, I enjoy doing it because it requires you to come up with a solution to a problem that's a little different, but I, I like it in the fact that your input costs are lower. You're not buying chemical, you're not buying a lot of inputs, fertilizer and pesticides. I think I have gotten better at organic farming over the last 18 years, but on the other hand, there, there's always a year where you have a failure. Um, most years you have a crop or some crops that do really good and there's always something that you wished you would have done different or you have a crop that didn't do very well. But I like farming organically because I don't like being around or handling pesticides and herbicides and chemicals and also the economics of it of not spending the money for the extra product. My input costs are lower being organic. I would recommend other people should try organic. They should probably, best if they did it in phases or a little bit at a time, don't jump in all at once. The first couple of years, uh, it was definitely a learning curve. There was, we had weed pressure and weed problem. Uh, we had to learn how to run, <laughs> run a row crop cultivator and, and how important it was for timing, for controlling weeds. One of the biggest things was if you can see <laughs> weeds germinating, <laughs> and see them when you drove by, <laughs> you knew it was too late. <laughs> it seemed like though over time after doing it, it got better. Farming organically, uh, it, it seems like to me that crop rotation made a big difference in weed pressure, um, rotated different crops and, and using some cover crops seemed to help as far as weed pressure. My yields are I guess on average, I would honestly say they're a little lower than, than the conventional farmer. But with the cattle, some of the crops too that I raise are for feed for the cattle. 
This year was a tough year in the fact of the weather and as wet as it was, it was hard to get the crop off the field this fall, but whether you were organic or conventional in this area, it, everybody had that same problem. Working with my father-in-law has been fun. He does a lot of the field work for us and he has a lot of ideas how to do certain things. Yeah, it works out good between the both of us working together. We've been married now for just about 50 years and Angie is married to Tim and we have uh, five children. We had all the kids here a couple of weeks ago. We took some family pictures. So we got a big family here <laughs> with all the grandkids. I've been so fortunate there. <laughs> this year we had a calf and uh, he was born and we had to pull the calf. And right away, we knew something's wrong here. This, uh, he just, he's born blind, the poor little guy. We had quite a time for him to get him started there nursing and whatnot, but Tim, he's got the patience of Job and he kept working with him. And at one point we had him out with the regular cows and then he was going through the hot wire and stuff there. We had quite a time and he'd short out the fence. So then we just brought him and his mother up in the feedlot up there and they spent the summer up there. And now where you go out there and you holler Batman or stuff and he's right out there and kind of run up and walks around with his head up in the air because I suppose he's, that's, he's relying off of just sound and everything. But he's done very well. He's gained uh, as good as the other ones, if not a little bit better maybe. I like farming. I like being around cattle, livestock. Uh, I like being out in the field and cutting hay and I guess if anybody else is interested in farming organically, I, I guess the best thing I can tell them is that, you know, to ask questions, go to field days. There's definitely information out there on how to get started farming organically. I would recommend other people to uh, work with NRCS. Uh, I think they have a lot of good ideas as far as no-till and cover crop and rotational grazing and putting animals on the land. I think those are good ways to improve your soil and, uh, and the NRCS is, is a, good, a good place, a good resource and they help me out a lot. One of the most important things farming this way organically and going with the no-till is farming is fun again where you're not worrying about trying to get to uh, pay all these expenses. You know, you don't have to have 10,000 acres or whatever. You can operate on a smaller scale where you can, you can make a profit and then we can get more family farms established there. I would love to uh, encourage people to take a, a good look at this there. You know, we as farmers, and we run such a small margin of profit here, any way that where we can be a little more effective, especially with the no-till, I think that's something that's really a, a thing that's, take a good look at it and uh, try it. And uh, it takes a while for that to kind of get your organic matter built up. But once you get this going, we were on a field day here last year, and that was through NRCS got to uh, tour these farms, go through it, and they showed what the yield were on them. And I think that's the key there, is to uh, educate yourself or to get out and see what's available.